All right, so as module one of our chemistry comes to a close, let's take stock of what we know and what we've learnt. We've learned a lot more about our atom, the building blocks of everything around us. We've learnt about the nucleus in the centre that contains the positively charged protons and the neutral neutrons, and we've learnt about the electrons orbiting around the outside with their negative charge in their shells. In particular, we've also noted those valence electrons, the ones furthest away from the nucleus. Take note of those, they're going to play a big role in what we're doing in the next module. We've also had a closer look at our periodic table. So we've learned how we can identify atoms within the periodic table, but we've also looked at some of the trends hidden within, found some of that information which isn't so easily gleaned at a glance. We've also discussed the difference between elements, compounds and mixtures, so that you can better discern the identity of all the materials around you. And in fact, that's what I want to do now. I want you to have a look around you, wherever you might be, and try and identify materials as being elements, compounds, or mixtures. In particular, see if you can find any materials you have around that are made of just one element. See if you can find any. Maybe you'll find your lead pencil, uh, which always makes me giggle because lead pencils, ironically, aren't made of lead. They're actually made of carbon. So you've got a carbon pencil, perhaps. Maybe you've got some gold jewellery. Now, uh, most gold jewellery isn't actually just made of gold. It's an alloy. It's usually a mixture of gold and copper. Gold's a very soft metal, so we're mixing copper that makes it harder, so you're not as likely to dent it or scratch it. But maybe you've got some pure gold jewellery. Uh, if you're particularly lucky, you might have a diamond. Diamonds are, like your lead pencil, also made of carbon. Just the carbon atoms are structured and arranged differently. If you're looking around though, I doubt you're finding many more substances than that that are purely elemental. You may remember a conversation we had earlier about the air that we're breathing, and that's 80% nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. So we do have elements there, but they're still present in a mixture. Pure elemental substances don't make up a huge part of our day to day. Most of what you see around you is actually made of compounds. So if that's the case, it's obviously going to be kind of important for us to understand how these elements join together to make compounds, to make these new and different materials. If we come back to the example that you and I have been discussing earlier in this module, mixing hydrogen gas and oxygen gas to make water, if you think about the properties of those different substances, hydrogen is a gas at room temperature, oxygen is also a gas, it's that gas that we need to breathe to live, and yet when you chemically unite those two materials and you make water, a new compound, its properties are vastly different. It's a liquid at room temperature, we need to drink it to live, but we certainly can't breathe it. Lots of other interesting and useful materials around you are all made of compounds. Examples include plastics, which have made up a huge part of our day-to-day -day lives now. Vitamins, dyes, caffeine, your good friend in the morning, all these different substances are compounds made by joining atoms together. So if so many of the materials around us are made of compounds by joining atoms together, it's probably important that we understand how we build these compounds. So come along to the next module and that will be our primary focus. I'll see you there.